This is an A-level biology presentation looking at respirometers. In this session, we're going to look at a respirometer and we're going to look at traces to identify all the different things that you can interpret from a particular trace. And we're going to do some calculations around pulmonary ventilation rate. To get started, all you have to do is identify the three main types of lung diseases and give an example of each one. Pause the presentation. Spend two minutes coming up with your answer, and when you're ready, you can restart the presentation. Well, the three types of diseases are there's airway diseases, lung tissue diseases, and lung circulation diseases. In terms of examples, you've got asthma and emphysema, the airway ones that are most common, pulmonary fibrosis, the sarcoidosis of the lung tissue ones, and for circulation ones, we talk about pulmonary hypertension. It is worth taking time to learn a couple of examples of each of those different diseases. In animals, the breathing rate is controlled by the levels of carbon dioxide inside the blood. Chemoreceptors in part of the brain known as the medulla measure the concentration of carbon dioxide levels in the blood and they make adjustments to breathing rate to compensate for too high or too low carbon dioxide levels. Remember, carbon dioxide is a slightly acidic gas and as a consequence, it can impact on enzyme related actions inside the body, which is why it can be toxic and poisonous. So you've got to make sure that inside your body, the carbon dioxide levels do not get high enough in order to cause problems. As a consequence, the body will increase breathing rate and heart rate in order to circulate blood and increase the rate of gas exchange. The pictures in front of you on the left shows an old fashioned respirometer where you had a paper put onto a cylinder and the cylinder rotated round and as the person breathed in or breathed out the pen or pencil moved up and down and basically drew a pencil mark on the rotating drum. More recently, of course, we moved on to digital and as a consequence, the computer will generate a particular graph and it will print it out for us should we need it. Depending on what you've done at GCSE, you may be familiar with the trace from a spirometer. And if you are, at this point, you can just pause the presentation and try and identify and extract as much information as you can from this particular trace. If you're less familiar with it, you keep the presentation going and you are given some support in the next section. So you can pause now or continue on. On the left hand side, you'll find a number of terminologies that you should be able to apply to a spirometer trace. Use the numbers one, two, three, four, and five and identify where on the particular trace you would find each of those things on the left hand side. Pause the presentation now, when you've done the best you can, after about five minutes, restart the presentation and see how you've done. So you have a number of different terminologies when talking about spirometer traces, and you have to be able to identify on a spirometer where you'll find each of these things. So you've got your vital capacity, your tidal volume, your residual volume, your expiratory reserve volume, one single breath, inspiratory reserve volume, inspiratory capacity, total lung capacity, and functional residual capacity. Now you'll notice there I haven't actually explained any of those terms. All we've done is identify them on the trace. The reason for that is your next task is to write a definition for each one of those terms using the trace in front of you. So pause the presentation, come up with the best definition that you can, and when you're ready, you can restart the presentation. So pause now. What you've been given now is all of the definitions, but they are jumbled up. So on the left, you've got the terminology. On the right, you've got the definition. What you've got to do now is be able to match up the correct terminology with the correct definition. Pause the presentation and when you're ready, you can restart and check your answers. Well, these are the definitions that you should be looking for and the definitions you should be using from this point forward. So you can modify your definition, but I would suggest you memorize each of these off by heart. 
remember that they are parts of a trace so you will be given a drawing of a trace and asked to identify or read off values for each of the different parts you are not going to be asked a straight up definition or very unlikely to be asked a straight up definition of any of these terms they're going to apply them to some kind of interpretation of data what you've got here is a question that would be a kind of thing that you'd expect to see in the exam and what you're given is you are given a piece of paper which has been obviously graphed it has a spirometer trace on it and you are given a scale to identify each of the time and the volume the time of course is on the x-axis and the volume is on the y-axis what you have to do is at this point pause the presentation answer the questions try and calculate the pulmonary ventilation rate and when you're ready you can restart the presentation check your answers so pause now and let's have a look at some answers well the tidal volume is not 0.5 and the reason the tidal volume is not 0.5 is because if you look on the scale the height of the small lines is two squares and on that scale four squares is one dm3 so two squares is half of that which gives you 0.5 dm3 their inspiration reserve is 0.75 expiration is 2.5 and you can work your way through each of those calculations if you are unclear why the numbers being used are the numbers that are used go back to the previous bit of the presentation where we went to the definitions and check to make sure you've actually got the right definition for each of the different factors that you're looking for remember the last thing you had to do was calculate the pulmonary ventilation rate the pulmonary ventilation rate is the tidal volume multiplied by the breathing rate well you have to use a graph to work out that your breathing rate is 12 per minute and then you had to work out that your tidal volume is 0.5 and as a consequence 0.5 times 12 gives you 6 dm3s per minute and that's the amount of gas being breathed in and out per minute here's another type of graph that you'd see and you can tell in this one literally just looking at the volume of our breathed out so they've got the person to take one breath in and they've asked that person to breathe out group a it says has healthy lungs who has an airway disease and who has a lung tissue disease now at this point you need to be able to remember the definitions and the impact of airway diseases and lung tissue diseases and if necessary you can go back and watch the presentation on lung disease if you're not familiar with those but when you go through it here's what you should find well if we look at the two lines group b and group c group b the person can breathe in and out at the same rate as pretty much a healthy person which is group a there's not a big difference however very quickly they breathe out the maximum amount of gas they can breathe out which means there is an issue in terms of the volume of air that's inside the lungs group c however they can breathe in and out and they're breathing the gas out at a much slower rate the rate at which the gas is escaping the lungs is much slower hence the gradient of the graph is lower as a consequence group b are the most likely individuals to have the lung tissue problem because they can breathe in and out very quickly there's nothing blocking the tubes it's just the volume of gas that they're having problems with the vital capacity is reduced whereas in group c it's an airway disease because they cannot breathe out as quickly those tubes are constricted and as a consequence the vital capacity is not affected compared to b but the rate at which they can move that gas in and out is affected and just to finish off come up with different activities or go and research some other specific medical conditions or diseases that affect the ability of someone to breathe and then draw the respective trace you, you would find if they were tested on a spirometer make sure you include an explanation of why the spirometer trace looks the way it does uh, as part of your work so that you're able to go back over it and check your understanding